All right. My name is Adam Blosser. I am the pastor here at Goshen Baptist Church, and I am pleased to be able to have this opportunity to speak with you about church membership. We have a church membership class at Goshen that is required for everyone who is seeking membership in our church, and we realize that not everyone is always able to participate in that class in an in-person setting at uh, the scheduled time for the class. And so we wanted to be able to provide at least some of that content uh, via video. And so our uh, membership class uh, covers quite a bit of material and usually takes place over the course of about three hours. And so uh, this video will just cover one section of the class. And so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that you can see the PowerPoint that I'll be using uh, throughout this uh, first section of the class. And so the class is really divided up into uh, five sections. And this is kind of a simple outline for the class. We start out with talking about what is the gospel, which is really the most important thing that we can talk about it's important as followers of Jesus that we are on the same page about what the gospel is uh, before we uh, covenant together in church membership. And so we want to make sure that uh, we all have a good understanding of what the gospel is. The second question is, what is the church? Which is also an essential question for us to address and talk about as we think about uh, this subject of church membership. The third question is, what is a Baptist church? We are a Baptist church, and that means that there are some things that we believe that are distinct from some other uh, Christian groups, and so we want to uh, be clear about what those things are. So we'll talk about what is a Baptist church. We also uh, are a church that is a part of the Southern Baptist Convention, and so we want to talk about what that looks like and what that means uh, for our church and then finally, uh, what is a member of Goshen Baptist Church? Uh, you can be a member of any local church, but you are interested in church membership at Goshen. And so we want to talk about what, it, what does it mean to be a member of Goshen Baptist Church? And so this particular video is going to focus on that first question, what is the gospel? What is the gospel? And uh, the first passage of scripture that I would really uh, like to look at with you is Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 10. And so I do encourage you to have your Bible with you, especially in this first section of the class, because you are going to be using uh, your Bible in this first section. And so it's Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 10. Normally, if we were together in person, I would have someone uh, read the passage for us, but since I'm uh, doing this on video, I'm going to go ahead and read it uh, for us now in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Uh, if you need to go get your Bible, pause the video so that you can do that, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and read from Ephesians 2, starting in verse 1. It says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of work, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And again, that is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Uh, you should have received uh, prior to uh, 
receiving the information about this video, you should have received a document that is the class notes. And so I hope that you will keep up with that and uh, fill in the blanks as we move along through uh, this first section of the class. Because uh, the first question that I want to ask about Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, is what is our initial condition before God? What is our initial condition before God? And you can see it there if you look at the first three verses of Ephesians 2. And I think some of the things that you'll notice there is that we are apart from God, right? We are apart from God because of our sin. We are not reconciled to God. In fact, uh, we are enemies of God. The Bible talks about us being enemies of God because of our sin. And so that is who we were uh, before Christ. That is who we were on our own uh, because of our sin. But the second question is, who acts first in reconciliation? So I encourage you to look at verse four and kind of answer that question in your mind. Who acts first in reconciliation? And you can see it there at the very beginning of verse four. It's God, right? God acts first in reconciliation. The text says, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us. And then the next question, how does God act? And you can see it there in verses five through seven, or we might say, uh, in whom or through whom does God act? And the answer is in Christ, right? In Christ. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, uh, seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, uh, so that he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So God acts first in reconciliation, and he acts in Christ or through Christ. Uh, the next uh, passage of scripture that I would like for you to turn to is 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and so I encourage you to go ahead and uh, turn there in your Bible. Again, if you need some time to uh, turn there, you can uh, pause this video, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, starting in verse 20. Uh, Paul writes, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And so the question that I want to ask that goes along with that passage is, what is our position before God in Christ? So we said that before Christ, we were separated from God. We were not reconciled to God. We were enemies of God. But now in Christ... We have been given what? The righteousness of God. Paul tells us that we uh, have been made righteous. We have been reconciled to God and received the righteousness of God. God is able, because of Jesus, to look at us and not see our sin, not treat us as sinners, but treat us according to the righteousness of God. So, how should we respond to the gospel? If this is the truth, that we were separated from God because of our sin, but Jesus died to pay for our sin, to make us right with God, how do we respond? What do we do? And the answer to that question we can see very clearly in Mark chapter 1, verse, verse 15, is that responding to the gospel includes repentance and faith. Responding to the gospel includes repentance and faith. Uh, Mark chapter 1 verse uh, 15 says the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So responding to the gospel includes repentance and faith. We turn away from our sin 
and we place our faith, we place our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The next passage of scripture that I'd like for you to turn to is Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, and I'm going to read verses 9 and 10. Again, you need to pause the video to find that passage of scripture. That's totally okay. But I'm going to go ahead and read Romans chapter 10, beginning in verse 9. It says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with a heart, one believes and is justified. And with a mouth, one confesses and is saved. So what do we confess? We confess that Jesus is Lord. We confess our sins to God. We confess that Jesus is Lord. What must we believe? We need to believe in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, right? We confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. And then what does it mean to be justified? Well, though guilty, we are declared innocent. We are guilty before God because of our sin. But because of Jesus and his perfect life and his death on the cross to pay for our sin, we can be declared innocent. We can be declared righteous. God can look at us just as if we had never sinned, not because of who we are, not because of what we've done, but because of Jesus and his perfect life for us. And so that takes us back to the Ephesians 2 passage and uh, reminds us that we are not justified by works, but by grace through faith. There's nothing you can do to earn your salvation. There's nothing you can do to make yourself right with God. Your only hope is Jesus. Your only hope is to turn from your sin and to place your trust in Jesus and cling to him as your only hope of being made right with God. I want to show you one more verse of scripture in this section. It's 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Here's what Peter writes there in 1 Peter 3, 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. You see, the good news is that we get God. God is the gospel. If God is not treasured as the ultimate gift of the gospel, nothing else matters. We can talk about a lot of things that come with our salvation. One of the things that we often talk about is the hope of heaven. And, and there's so many wonderful things about heaven, the rest that awaits us, the the beauty and splendor of heaven, the reality that we'll be reunited with others who have trusted Christ as well. But the most important thing about heaven is that we will be with God. The good news is that we get God. God is the gospel. If God is not treasured as the ultimate gift of the gospel, nothing else matters. Now, if we were together in person, I would uh, at this time share with you my own testimony of how I came to faith in Christ. And uh, I do want to do that even on this video. But then I would have you share your testimony of how you came to faith in Christ. And so I do want you to know that even though you cannot now uh, share your testimony with me about how you came to faith in Christ, I do want to get together with you in person, and I do want to hear of how you uh, first came to faith in Christ. Maybe you've actually heard this information that I've shared with you this morning, and you would say, you know what, I'm actually not yet a Christian. That's okay, because the, the gospel is open to all of us, that uh, if you are not yet a follower of Jesus, the Bible is very clear that it is not too late for you. You can even right now turn from your sin and place your trust in in Jesus. And I would love the opportunity to talk with you more about what it means to follow Jesus. 
this is so important to me because I uh, came to faith in Christ as an eight-year-old boy. Um, I grew up in a Christian home with parents who uh, raised me to know and follow the Lord. They took me to church every time that the doors were open. Uh, we were always there. And so they were, they taught me the gospel from a young age. I learned the gospel from my uh, Sunday school teachers at church, my pastors at church. And uh, as an eight-year-old boy, I first uh, understood the seriousness of my sin, the reality that my sin separated me from God and that my only hope was Jesus. And so as an eight-year-old boy, I sat down with my pastor he shared the truth of the gospel with me, and it was then that I turned from my sin and placed my trust in Jesus. Of course, I was very young, an eight-year-old, and so it's been a process of growth uh, over the years. Uh, I um, have, have had to, you know, may really continue growing in my understanding of who God is and my understanding of uh, who I am and my sin and my need for for Christ. And so it's been a process of growth, but it was then as an eight-year-old that I first uh, turned from my sin, placed my trust in Jesus, followed Jesus in baptism, and began the process of growing as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, maybe your testimony is very similar to that. Maybe you have a very different testimony. Maybe your testimony was much more is much more dramatic than that. Whatever your testimony is, I look forward to hearing it from you when we're able to meet in person. And then also, if you are not yet a follower of Jesus, I'd love the opportunity to share with you more about what it means to follow Jesus. Uh, thank you so much uh, for watching this first video as we've covered the question, what is the gospel? Uh, the next question that we will cover in the next video is what is the church? So this one was, what is the gospel? The next one is, what is the church?